Hello friends, this is the first video of a series on vitamin B9 that is folic acid. In this part, we will discuss the components of folic acid, active form of folic acid, difference between folic acid and folate, absorption, diet resources, and recommended daily allowance. First we'll see components of folic acid. This first part is pteridine. The second part is para-aminobenzoic acid. And this part is glutamate. Next is active form of folic acid. Folic acid is converted into dihydrofolic acid and then dihydrofolic acid is converted to tetrahydrofolic acid. The enzyme is folate reductase and both the reactions require NADPH. So the active form of folic acid is tetrahydrofolic acid. It is useful in one carbon metabolism. The carbon groups that attach to this are formyl group, formimino, methenyl, methylene and methyl tetrahydrofolic acid. The most active form is methyl tetrahydrofolic acid. These are interconvertible. Now we will see difference between folic acid and folate. First is folic acid is a synthetic form of vitamin B9 but folate is natural form of vitamin B9. Second is folic acid is used for supplementation and fortification of food whereas folate is present in green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, whole grains etc. Folic acid must be converted into folate the active form whereas folate is already an active form and it is ready to use. Folic acid can be less effective for people with genetic variation in methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene because methylene tetrahydrofolic acid converts into methyl tetrahydrofolic acid the more active form by enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase whereas folate is easily absorbed and utilized by the body so the key differences are folic acid requires conversion to folate while folate is already in the active form when choosing the supplements or fortified foods if you have a genetic variation then consider methyl folate or folate supplements and if you are looking for a more natural approach choose whole foods rich in folate if you are already taking supplements ensure that it contains folate methyl folate instead of folic acid folic acid occurs in food as polyglutamate form with 3 to 7 glutamate residue held by peptide bond. These residues are removed by action of enzyme polyglutamate hydrolase present in jejunum and converts into monoglutamate form. In the jejunal mucosa, folate monoglutamate is converted to tetrahydrofolic acid and into methyl tetrahydrofolic acid then it is transported to blood the circulatory form of folic acid is methyl tetrahydrofolic acid now we'll see dietary sources of folic acid that includes plant sources and animal sources plant sources include green leafy vegetables legumes beans, whole grain, cereals, pulses, etc. And animal sources include egg, 
glandular organs like liver, kidneys, etc. Milk is a poor source of folic acid. Recommended daily allowance for adults is 200 microgram per day. In pregnancy, the requirement is increased to 400 microgram per day. During lactation, the requirement is 300 microgram per day. So this is all about the first part. Hope you get the value out of it. If you do, then please like and share this video and also subscribe my channel. Thank you.